It's Friday, September 7, 2012, and let's talk about what happened this week over at XTADevelopers.com. <laughs> First off, a huge thanks to Adam for putting out the news video on Monday. Of course, I was out of town for Labor Day weekend, so I was completely unavailable and away from pretty much all network connectivity. But let's get on with the news. First off, some device update news. This week, the Sony Xperia Acro S received ports of CM10 and CM9 on exactly the same day. These were done by the same guy, FXP, from the Free Xperia Project. It appears there are still a few issues with it, minor issues. It is considered sort of a daily driver, though. If you want to use it, you can definitely do that. And the good thing is there's a bug tracker available so if you have problems you can actually go to a Google code page and submit your bugs there or see if anybody else has had the same bug. Also this week the Toshiba Folio 100 received an unofficial port of CM10. From the article it appears that there were several unofficial ports of CM10. They were created on subsequent days and one appears to be based on the other. I didn't notice any differences there but I didn't really go looking very deep into it. So if you have one of the Toshiba Folio 100s and you're interested in learning more about this unofficial port it may be worth reading both of the threads. They are both linked on the post on the portal. As far as issues with the port that's officially linked to on the portal, it appears it's having some issues with HDMI, Bluetooth, USB 3G dongles, and if you use an external mouse, there's a bit of a lag. So for some people, that's definitely not gonna be a daily driver. For a lot of other people, that's really not gonna make that big of a difference. Also this week, the Samsung Epic 4G received an official port of CM10. It now has CM10 nightly builds available. As far as issues with that, there are some problems with the headset mic. It goes into a deep sleep when you plug it into a wall charger, not when you plug it into a computer though, and there are random occasional rare reboots. So again, all in all, not exactly something that's going to cause you to say, I can't use this ever. For some people I can see it being a, a pretty big problem though. I tend to use the wall charger a lot more than I actually connect to my computer at this point. However, I don't own the Epic 4G, so it's not really my place to say anything. And the last update I thought I'd mention, the Nexus 7 is now officially receiving AOKP nightlies. So if you're a fan of the Kang project and you want to try it out on the Nexus 7, you can now do that. In other news, in the past we've talked quite a bit about Sony Xperia S being added to the AOSP. Well, up to this point it's mostly been talk. However, as of this week, Sony has officially released the binaries for the Xperia S and made them available to the AOSP. Additionally, Cyanogen Mod's team has committed to submit patches to the AOSP to make these binaries fit in a little bit better. So if you're looking to build a ROM off of the AOSP for the Xperia S, now you can grab those binaries and get to work. Another thing we've talked about in the past, I think, or maybe it was over on my other channel where I talk a lot about Linux, probably over there. Mozilla has created their own mobile OS they're calling Boot to Gecko for right now. Well, up to this point, it's mainly been sort of proof of concept. You've been able to run it sort of live on top of your Linux installation. However, some of the wonderful people at XDA have managed to get it working on the Motorola Defy. Now, working is a term I'm going to use very, very loosely there, because in the live installation on top of Linux, I was barely able to do anything. And from what I've read, they've gotten it to boot, they've got the touchscreen to work, and they've got sound working, and that's pretty much it. However, it is still a very early project, so it's something that could have a lot of potential. And honestly, I look forward to seeing this on other devices, just for the sake of having other options available. I know Adam talked about Open Web OS coming out this past week, so honestly, if you were given the option of using something other than Android on your Android device, or if you even have a Windows Phone device, or an iOS <coughs> device, would you consider using one of these other Open OSs like Boot to Gecko or Open Web OS instead of Android, Windows Phone, or further? Personally, I would like it if I could do it in a dual boot just to sort of get the experience with it, learn on it, maybe do some development on it. I don't know if I'd want to use anything like that for my daily driver. I have used WebOS before. I've used the BlackBerry OS. They're, they're kind of similar in terms of functionality, not in terms of anything else. And they're very interesting in the way that they function. It's just a different way of looking at things. I don't know. I was just curious what you guys thought about that. Moving in a completely different direction, there were a couple of major events that happened this week. Nokia and Microsoft had a joint event where Nokia unveiled some new products and Microsoft talked a lot about Windows Phone 8. Not really going to go into detail on that because there's just a long spec list of stuff that's available for Windows 8 now. New, new features that are being added, new things that are being unveiled. So if you want to read about that, head on over to the portal and take a look at the post. In terms of Nokia, they're releasing two new devices, the Lumia 820 and the Lumia 920. Both of these are Windows Phone 8 devices. Not sure on release date, but the specs look pretty similar to what we've seen out of a lot of other devices. They're in the 4 point something inch market. The specs are about 1.4, 1.5 gigahertz dual core, 
I think a gig of RAM, I mean, pretty much just about the same as a lot of the other devices we're seeing nowadays to be expected. I'm honestly kind of curious to see how Windows Phone 8 will run on those type of devices as compared to Android Jelly Bean running on top of the same kind of device. I'm not that familiar with Windows Phone, so I'm not even going to try to throw my head into the ring on that one. Additionally, this week, Motorola had their own event where they announced three new devices, specifically the Droid Razer HD, the Droid Razer Max HD, and the Droid Razer M. The Razer M is now available. It was available for pre-order at the end of the event. I think it's $99, not 100% sure on that, but people who attended the event actually got the Razer M, which is pretty cool. The funny thing is all three of the devices have sort of similar specs. The Razer M is a little bit smaller and it has similar specs to most of the other things we're seeing. Dual core, one gig or so of RAM, running Jelly Bean, yeah. The Razer HD and the Razer Max HD are a little bigger, a little faster, with the Razer having the traditional Razer battery not being particularly amazing, and the Razer Max having a much bigger battery that's supposed to last for a lot longer. Also, they announced they're going to be putting out developer editions of these devices, so you can get it completely unlocked if you want, but you can't get it through the carrier that way, I'm sure. And the other big announcement, and I consider this a big one coming out of Motorola, is they announced that all 2011 and 2012 release devices will get upgraded to Jelly Bean. And if for some reason your device is a little too slow, a little too old, I guess, to run Jelly Bean, you'll be given a $100 credit toward a new Motorola device that is capable of running Jelly Bean or is already running it. In terms of when the actual update's going to happen, they say soon, and I'm going to give that big old air quotes because who really knows? I think we're talking the end of 2012, beginning first quarter of uh, 2013, but there's really no nailed down dates for that. Either way, though, very cool to see them coming up and saying, we're going to be putting Jelly Bean on everything. And yeah, they're owned by Google, so they really ought to be. Anyway, rambling on there for quite a little while. Let's wrap things up with some XDA specific XDA TV news. If you have not seen it already, on Tuesday Lance put out his second video in the Developing a Windows Phone app series talking about OAuth, authentication using OAuth. And on Thursday TK put out an app review about Around Sound, an app that can detect sounds around you and turn down the music on your phone or your, your Android based device just to, to so you'll know when people are sneaking up on you. Definitely videos both worth watching, so if you haven't seen them already, I do highly recommend going to watch it. And if you haven't seen it already, go back and watch Adam's video from Monday. It's a, a news recap from the weekend. It's his first news video, so do go back and show him some love on that. He worked really, really hard on it. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today, and I think this video has gone a lot longer than I anticipated. I had a page full of notes, that, I mean, top to bottom, left to right, completely full of notes, because I decided to do this a slightly different way. But thanks so much for watching. If if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button down below and hit subscribe up above to be notified when we put out new content. Thank you so much for watching again though, and I will see you on Monday.